Hi y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, in today's video, I am going raw and uncut, which means I'm gonna leave that camera rolling and you're gonna see it all. Every cast, every fish caught, every tree limb or snag I get, you see it all. It's as real as it gets. And so I launched my kayak in the back of this creek with the intention of going out to the main channel, doing some fishing out there. However, on my way up through this creek, I keep seeing surface activity, fish busting the surface and whatnot. And so I think I'm just gonna fish right here. So I've come up a spell in this creek and I was before I turned the camera on. Of course now they're gone. But Murphy's Law, there was there was a couple over there. But there was some fish really splashing this area right in here. So I think I'm gonna just start here and kind of fish my way back in this creek where I've been seeing this activity. Most of it has been along the shoreline, kind of busting shad up through here, but there are some kind of out here as well. So anyway, y'all, again, raw and uncut. You're about to see it all. I'm gonna get the camera here in the chest and we're gonna get over here and get started. My bait today is on my ultralight rod. This is a St. Croix, well that fish give us the bird right there. Did you see that? He give us the fin. He's still giving us the fin. I'm gonna show you the bait in a second. I'm gonna just, let me just put that right in his face there. He wants it that bad, let's give it to him. He's gonna interrupt what I'm saying. Of course now he's gone. But this is a St. Croix Panfish Series rod, six foot long ultralight. I got a 1000 series dial reel. He, man, he's taunting me. That may just be a shad, I don't know. That's a one inch gulp minnow, smelt color on a 164th ounce jig head, number eight hook, two pound line. This bait, my favorite ultralight lure, catches literally everything. Anything that swims is gonna eat this bait. Like I said, I'm gonna get over here and kind of work the shoreline. That's where I've seen the bulk of the activity. But we may just make a cast or two in here as well and just see what we can get. It may be like a small skipjack possibly. Could be white bass. Could just be shad coming up too, you know, flipping around, I don't know. What I've been seeing along the shoreline, it looks like probably bass or something. White bass, yellow bass, large mouth, something coming up, you know, and, and really working them shad. But these out here, I'm not entirely certain. Either way, whatever I catch, and I will catch something, you never, I don't want to say never, nothing's 100% in life, except the fact that the weatherman's always wrong. But there ain't too many certainties in life, but most of the time, you throw in a gulp minnow on ultralight, you catch a fish, and you catch a bunch of fish. And that's the goal this morning. I woke up just like, feeling it down to my bones, I wanted to catch a bunch of fish. And so, that's the plan this morning. I'm gonna catch a bunch of fish. I may keep a few, depending on what I get. Throw in my bucket, maybe keep some bluegill for some live baits on my next catfishing trip. Definitely if I get any keeper size crappie, I'll keep those. Maybe if I get some yellow bass or white bass that are smaller, I'll keep those alive. If I get any bigger ones, we'll put those in a cooler for some cut bait. So, kinda gonna have some fun catching a bunch of fish this morning and pull some double duty out here, make it like a little bit of a bait run too. I don't know what these things are, it's splashing, but they don't seem to be interested in the old gulp today, so. We'll get over here and work this brush and these docks and stuff. I'm just gonna start here where I'm at and we'll make our way back down. It's a pretty long creek. I had every intention of going out to the main channel. That's, that was the plan coming out here, but sometimes you see some fish activity and you just gotta call an audible. That's what I've done here, so. Whatever these are splashing around don't seem to be, they don't seem to be in too enthused. Let's get over here along the shoreline and just see what we can get over here. I'm gonna leave this camera running for probably hour and a half to two hours. I'm gonna fish longer than that today, but we'll do an hour and a half to two hours on this video. That's, 
I ain't trying to do no. What, what, what was the movie there? The Patriot or Braveheart, like three hours long. I ain't no Mel Gibson people, so I ain't gonna keep anybody in front of the TV set for no three hours. We got a fish here. We got the first one. Let's see what this is. He's pulling, buddy. He's been pulling now. Fish number one. Oh, that's a nice bluegill. Nice bluegill for fish number one, man. Look at this. Man, we're off to a great start right here, y'all. Look at that, man. Hold yourself out there, bluegill. Nice. I brought my board with me. Let's just stick you on there and see how big you are today. He's tall. He just, just shy of the eight inch mark on there. Boy, look how tall that fish is though, man. Get out of here, fish. Man, we're off to a good start right there, man. I love catching some bluegill, especially catching them like that. I don't know. I'm in my old town kayak today. This is kind of my bare bones, minimalist setup. No graph, no motor, no electronics, just, just my pedals and my kayak. Just enough to get me out here. I love fishing this minimalist setup, but the questions a lot of people want to know how deep you are, water temperature, you know, crap like that, that really don't matter for what I'm doing here, which is just beating the banks. Oh, I had two bass. I had two bass follow me up right there. They were small. They were bass following me back. But the questions, you know, depth, water temp, stuff like that, I can't answer for you. But it don't matter because when you're doing this style of fishing, you just we just beat the banks. We're, we're going to go down through here. We're going to work the brush. We're going to work these docks. We see fish busting in schools around us. We're going to throw into that. And so you know, minor details of depth and water temperature. Oh, that was I think that was a skipjack that followed me up right there. Last two casts, we've had some follows, but no takers. I wondered if some of them splashes I've seen kind of out in the middle of this creek wasn't smaller skipjack. You get some bigger skipjack, they'll be coming up out of the water after bay. You like to see the whole skipjack surface, breach the surface, but smaller ones, oftentimes not so much. I'm going to keep a few if we get them, but I don't need a lot of bait. I'm probably just going to be catfishing tomorrow, and then I think the weather, assuming the weatherman is somewhat accurate, <laughs> that's a stretch. But he's going to knock me out. The weather's going to knock me out the day after, so I don't need a lot of bait, but it'd be nice to to get a little bit for tomorrow. What do you think, fish? What do you think? Where you at? It's a nice bluegill. I can't believe he was alone over there. I love getting out here. Sunrise, early mornings having the water to just completely to myself. Just me and the, me and the fish. And getting out here with this ultralight rod and just shellacking some fish. This bait, I mean, the last raw and uncut video I did from a regular viewer, some of you like this stuff. That's why I keep doing it. I keep getting enough views to justify doing it. But the uh, last video there was kind of a grind. It wasn't one fish after another. It was kind of a, you catch a fish and go a little while and catch another. I never really got on a good school where I went on a big streak of just catching fish continuously. I'll throw over here too, just 
see what's going on with all that splashing but i mean at the end of that video when i filmed for like so, oh something got me right there's old skip oh he spit it <laughs> little baby skipjack i thought that's what some of them might have been <laughs> them things are high flying but um like i say in that by the time i got to i think i filmed for a little over two hours that day by the time you get to the end of that two hours it's like i ended up with a bunch of fish but it just wasn't never really got on a school and that's how it goes sometimes but you still i mean you just grind out a bite with this with this setup here you're, you're going to catch fish doing it unless the conditions are just awful unless the wind is just cranking and you can't feel your your lure you're getting a big bow in your line or unless the water's just super muddy chocolate milk the rest of the time you got decent weather conditions decent water conditions you ain't getting skunk little skip jackie dang near jumped into the kayak didn't he <laughs> i usually don't keep skipjack that small they um they don't when they're that small they don't hold on a hook very good they don't make a very big bait the gills kind of rip i'm gonna throw back here i hear them busting behind me if you use a head bait on one of them small ones here's one let's see if we can get a jump out of it there's a jump <laughs> Oh, he spit it too. <laughs> There's another baby. Look, them small skipjack, the, the bigger ones, you use a head bait and go to run your catfish hook up under the gills. It, it's solid, man. It holds. Real tough bait. But these, these smaller skipjack, they just rip. Uh, you get a little dink blue or channel cat will just rip the head right off you'll reel it up all you'll have is gill plates on your hook and the body sections just don't there's another one <laughs> they don't make for a very big bait this in here might be a little better be careful with him that two pound line and skipjack coming up thrashing around like that'll break that line this one here is big enough. I may throw him in the cooler here. You coming with me, Skipjack. You're just big enough to justify keeping you. Well, he tore my gulp up too, man. All that thrashing around, Skippy. You definitely coming with me now. You done tear up my gulp. Throw you in the cooler there, good buddy. There we go. Let's fix our gulp back here. These gulp tear pretty easy. You know, normally fish like bluegill and crappie and stuff, you'll catch a bunch per bait. But you get them skipjack or you get a large mouth that comes up shaking its head real hard. You'll tear them things. And I'll just flip them upside down. Now I got me a, basically a new bait on there. And these fish, they don't care if it's upside down, right side up. They don't care. It don't matter to them. Still looks like a small shad swimming through the water, which is what they're eating. These skipjack over here, they're eating threadfin shad. We had a full moon here recently, so we probably had a shad spawn. Probably. Usually when that happens, you'll see a bunch of just tiny, tiny fry in the water. And these one-inch minnow, here's another one. These one-inch gulp kind of mimic those shad fry this other one here it's gonna pull a little bit ain't he oh skippity doodah skip jack they're fun to catch bigger ones you know you get them it's a couple pounds and bigger man they come flying they're like we call them tennessee tarpon because they're kind of like baby tarpon the way they look and the way they jump and what do you think, Skip? You're another one that's kind of borderline on the edge of what I'm willing to keep. I'm going to throw you in there. No, I ain't either. He just, I missed the cooler. I missed the cooler, y'all. I botched it. Amateur hour up in here. Now I got my line around my pedals, too. 
Dead gummit. <laughs> yeah, I totally, I totally botched that. I don't know how it is. I'm sitting two foot away from the cooler and can't get him in there, but my gosh, it just happened. He just flopped right out. The fish saw his big break and took it, man. See them busting now. That kind of words out that I'm after them. I guess they moved on. It's fine by me. We'll get over here and get back to the shoreline. If we see them pop back up, we'll we'll throw after them again. I'm just gonna. Oh, if you can see here, the camera angle, but there's like three or four more docks down through here. We'll work all of them. We'll work these brush piles, these overhanging trees. We're just throwing all this stuff down through here. Every bit of it could be holding some fish. Normally, when I'm throwing this gulp, I like to just let it fall. Fall down into them branches, fall down along the dock pilings. But them skipjack, you know, they're up actively chasing those shad and minnows and stuff so when we throw in at those I'm reeling it in most of the most of the fish I'm gonna catch today and every trip though will be on the fall with this bait as it just drops down through the water column which I kind of like that about it because it makes it very easy to fish and I'm all about some easy fishing I ain't trying to work when I go fishing. I think there might be another tree. Maybe it's just that one. I see the end of it up there on the bank. I guess it just kind of curves that direction. I'll throw up there a little closer to it and see what happens. I won't get snagged and no branch over there because it looks like it's very got them old jig catcher branches on it I like the trees that come out it's got bigger branches that you can kind of fish around there was something hitting me but you can kind of drop your jig down in them branches and stuff you, you try dropping in something like that you're you're guaranteed you ain't getting that jig back See another one that's kind of come out. I don't know if y'all can see it with the glare, but kind of there where I threw that jig is on the edge of it. Nothing. There's something over there. A couple fish come up. I saw a lot of that on the way out of this creek that just it looked like bass was running shad like right up on the shoreline. I don't know, that, the same thing could have been going on out in the main channel. I didn't go all the way out there just to take a look. I figure if you got this many fish back here, you might as well just go ahead and try to catch them where you're at. I may run out there today after we're done filming this, I may just run out there, see what's going on. Of course, by the time we're done with this, the sun will be fully up over the trees over there and whatever surface activity is going on may be done with anyway. Well, let's keep making our way along, y'all. I've seen a couple of them fish come up and thought we might put a hook in one of them's jaw, but didn't work out. We'll get on them somewhere down through here. I guarantee you one of these docks, one of these brush piles, they're going to have something on them. We'll get them figured out sometime here in the next hour or so. Oh, Lord. I figured out how to catch that dock, didn't I? I couldn't have, I couldn't have threaded that through there. Again, if I tried, dead gummit. 
you know, as if you're sitting at home right now and you you laughing like this guy sucks i guarantee you you've been in this dock too at least one of you's out there would have nailed this thing yeah, i got it back see that's the difference between that's the difference between me and you people you would have get out you'd have got in that dock but you'd have had to break off a talented professional like myself i was able to get that jig back Anybody can get snagged, not everybody gets it back. That's what that's what that's what sets the pros from the amateurs apart right there, people. <laughs> I use that term pro very loosely. <laughs> Obviously. Oh, oh, something hit me. Something hit me right there on the on the retrieve. Another bluegill. Bluegill, I believe you may go in the bucket, good buddy. I don't want any real large bluegill, and I don't want any real small bluegill, but a nice, a nice in between. If I can get you in there without me botching it like I did the skipjack and the cooler. All right, there's just a the bait. Oh my gosh, I got in that dock again. But again, being the talented professional that I am, I popped it right out. You can't hide talent, folks. Not on camera. Not on pictures. Nothing. You, nothing hides talent. You couldn't put on a Halloween costume and hide this talent. Might improve my views if I put on a Halloween costume. But was a terrible cast. <laughs> Docs like this. We'll move along here pretty quickly on this one. Oh, these docks like this that have these plastic flotation blocks. I guess that's what you call I don't know exactly what they're called. I'm just going to back up and pedal backwards and work along through here. I'm not a huge fan of those. I know there's fish that will suspend kind of up under there. And I know a lot of crappie guys will get kind of right up on them and they'll they'll do the dock shooting thing where they shoot their jig kind of in those little crevices and whatnot but i'm just not a huge fan of these docks i like i like wood docks it's got the pile you know like the wood post pilings i find i do a lot better on docks like that than i do these float I, I have no idea what they're called flotation blocks i guess you know what i'm talking about and it could just be a confidence thing, you know, I don't know. But just historically, I've done a lot better on docks, like, well, like the next one that we're gonna fish down through here. It looks more like what I like to fish. Self turned around and we're gonna go over and throw at these brush piles and then work down to this dock. I may make another cast or two up here in the boat slip on this one, just see if we get something. You can see, <laughs> boy, that skipjack splashed my kayak. You can see how dirty this thing is. One of y'all needs to wash this kayak for me. I sure as heck ain't gonna do it. I typically wash my kayaks about once, maybe twice a year. I'll give them a good, good scrub down. This one's got, this one ain't been used much the last couple months, but it's got dirt and dust and pollen on it just sitting in my carport what's going on with my reel here what happened with that yeah i got lord almighty got i've got line around my rod tip y'all that's what felt weird about it we in bad shape today again i'm raw and uncut y'all any goof ups anything stupid like that you're gonna see it that's the nature of these videos like I said, it's as real as it gets. If you was out here fishing with me, you'd be seeing the same crap, the stupid stuff I do. I don't know how deep it is over here. I mean, obviously I don't know exact depth anyway because of not having the graph, but just historically having fished this creek in the past with 
a graph on. I honestly don't know. I know out in the middle of it, it's kind of deep. I think it's 27 feet deep out in the middle, but I don't know over here along the shoreline. With that brush and stuff there that's out, it's right there along the surface. It may be just super shallow right there. Beats me. In the end, it really don't matter. Is there gonna be fish there or they ain't? Well, if you can hear on the camera over my flapping gums, so them birds are active this morning. They up them trees chirping. Usually when the birds are real active, when nature's real active, fish are too. Usually. You come out on them days that are just flat, calm, just you can just feel it in the air. It's just it's just dead. You don't hear any birds, the squirrels ain't playing. Usually you ain't catching a lot of fish on them days either. Again, well, that's my experience, you know. There'll be somebody refute that in the comment box. Be like, well, I went out and didn't see a single squirrel, didn't hear a bird, and caught the biggest fish of my life. Let's keep making our way along here. One, well, we got two bluegill and some small skipjacks biting. We're going to get on them here at some point, y'all. We'll find them. Yeah, I've looked at them boat hoists right there and stuff. You see them all up and down the, the rivers and the creeks and lakes and stuff. And it's like... Obviously, the cables on the pulleys there, they're obviously rated to break at a certain strength so they can support the weight of the boat. But you see some of these docks on the lake that are really old and kind of the roofs of, of give out on them, you know, they're leaking. The wood's starting to rot. And you're like, you know, obviously the cables on them pulleys are rated to hold the strength or the, the weight of the boat but it's like some of these dock posts are they still <laughs> capable of holding that weight this one here is obviously fine but i saw that boat that got me thinking about some of these docks i've seen it's like how is it still supporting the weight you're like one one strong gust of wind away from having a collapsed dock and a big splash <laughs> Nothing over there. I'm gonna throw up under that boat if I can. I'm gonna try to skip up under there. Let's see what that cast will do for us. Let's see if there's anything back there. You know, my other kayak's got the live scope. And so if we was out here near it, we could just shine it up under there and take a look. But here's something. And that's, that live scope's real good for ruling out places that ain't got fish. But there's just something fun about doing what I'm doing here, the simplicity of it, the anticipation, making a cast, not knowing if you're gonna get bit or not. There's something fun about that. Something rewarding to it. In that bucket bluegill. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but I do like the simplicity of this. I like going home and unhooking the kayak, not having any batteries to plug in, nothing to charge. It's just something. You just can't, it's tough to explain. It just feels different. Some of you out there get it, some of you won't. That's okay. Everybody's got their own thing. I like my live scope. I use it a lot. 
I like my other kayak, but I like getting out in this one too from time to time and just it's good for the soul, I feel like. Another one I skipped way back up under there. We'll see what we get right there. It's kind of like, yeah, that other bluegill. It's like, surely he ain't alone. But it's like that the other day. When I filmed that last ultralight video. Was, you catch a fish and you think, okay, I'm about to, I'm about to get on them, and then nothing. Okay, something got me then. Didn't feel him. I saw my line starting to take off. That's oh, another, another bluegill right there that's going to be coming with us. Nice size bluegill right there. You got anything you want to say to the camera before you go in the bucket, bluegill? You want to tell them to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Don't bother telling them. They ain't going to do it anyway. That fish right there said he don't work for me. He said, if I'm going to forcibly put him in that bucket, he ain't doing nothing for me. He might even be in that bucket right now calling the law. He's probably back in there. He's probably got a cell phone in his pocket. I didn't I didn't see it, but everybody's got a cell phone these days. You you go to the you go to the grocery store. They got little ten year old kids walking around in their cell phones. Damnedest thing I ever seen. I don't know that I could have operated a cell phone when I was 10 years old. These kids today, though, they got every advantage in the world, and they all, most of them's dumb. I feel like the world's getting dumber every day. The Encyclopedia Britannica, when I was growing up, was kind of like your internet today. It was kind of like your old-fashioned Google. We had them encyclopedia. I think we had most of the letters at my house. Oh no, I set the hook hard in something right there. Take gum it. I ain't gonna be able to get up in there to get that out either. We about to we about to retie right here, people. Y'all gonna have to bear with me. What no, no, we ain't either. I pulled it free. Let's see if I bit my hook. Pour my gulp up there. Let's get rid of it. Like I was saying though, when I was a kid growing up, you had Encyclopedia Britannica. You go to the grocery store and you'd buy a new letter. And if you wanted to look up something, like turtles for instance, you'd go to letter T and you'd have a few paragraphs somewhere in that T lettered book, Encyclopedia Britannica, about turtles. These kids today, everything's on their phone, you know, they just, they want to learn about turtles. They type in Google turtle and somewhere in between the porno sites, there's going to be some information about turtles pop up. And these, these kids, they got all this information and knowledge right at their fingertips, yet you talk to some of these kids and, and they just, I don't know. The availability to having knowledge ain't translating into the absorption of that knowledge into their brains. <laughs> it don't seem like. Now, I ain't insulting nobody's kids out there. Individual. I'm sure your kids, you people watching, are very smart. They clearly, if they're watching me, they clearly got good taste in YouTube videos. But if you're around groups of kids or a lot of kids, you probably know what I'm talking about and can back it up what I'm saying because it's society's definitely getting dumber the smarter the internet gets the dumber people get I'm convinced of it I think I'm gonna make about one more cast up under here I had high hopes after pulling that big bluegill out but I'm losing faith Just keep making our way along, get over on the other side of it. And see what else is around there. Just throw right here. See what's around this deeper pole. 
the line all messed up again there. What the heck's going on here? There's another splash right there. Let's see what that is. Another maybe skipjack popping up. Old Skippy. Yeah, there's another little splash. Let's just throw over there. Make a few casts around that area now. Once is an accident, twice is a pattern, the old saying goes. It's popping up. It's probably that skipjack that escaped the cooler there earlier. He's coming up laughing at me. Giving me the fin. That's their version of shooting you a bird. Yeah. We ain't wasting no more time on him. Let's move along here, people. We got a lot more stuff to throw at that ain't got no fish on it too. <laughs> See if I can pull something out of here while we drift by it. Not that time. No lousy cast. I'm gonna let it sink down though. Just try to catch something on it. Dead gummit. Some of y'all laughed when I plunked that dock. I was wanting to catch a fish just to spite you. Didn't happen though, so you just keep laughing. Another lousy cast. I think I hit my cooler on the back swing. <laughs> my casting today is subpar, people. Got a fish right then, though. That's a hitting and a getting it, ain't he? He's pulling a little drag there, ain't he? Know what you're gonna get for your efforts, Bluegill? A trip with me tomorrow to go catfishing. Nope, oh, nope. Oh. Boy, you almost escaped, Bluegill. Good try. Good try, buddy. You was you was about three inches away from getting out of here. He blew his chance. When opportunity strikes people, you gotta be ready to just grab it by the cojones. That bluegill, he wasn't he wasn't ready for it. He buckled under the pressure. Now he's going with his catfish anymore. He may he may live to tell about the trip, you never know. Whatever Whatever bait I got left in that bucket tomorrow, it'll be let it'll be set free. I got another one right here. What about you, Bluegill? You want to come with me catfishing tomorrow? Your friend wasn't too impressed with it. He wasn't really feeling that idea. Let's take a look at you. Yeah, you'll bait a hook. Well, yeah, let's let that go. Thought twice about that one, y'all. I'm gonna throw back over there though. That one there ate it kind of deep. The other day when I filmed that other video, it seemed like fish, the better quality fish for a little deeper down. I wasn't having the real patience that day to let it sink far enough. Usually with this 164th ounce jig head, I'm catching fish that are I don't know, first six feet of the water column, let's say. It takes so long for this smaller jig head to sink down. It's hard for me to have the patience to go much deeper than that with it, but that slow fall rate is what catches you a bunch of fish with this thing too. So it's kind of, it's kind of a double-edged sword you use a heavier jig head you get down to the deeper depths quicker but it's it's not as natural a presentation on the way down so let's keep making our way along here i'm gonna, I'm gonna work this dock a little bit more here i think another terrible cast but i'm gonna throw it in your faces here when i catch a fish with it 
Come on, fishy. Reward me with that bad cast. Fish ain't having it. Let's make another one right over here. We got that bluegill. There's so much stuff to throw at, you know? It's like when you're just beating the banks like this, you can throw at a million different things. Like you'll, you'll, you'll hit 20 trees, nothing. And then you'll, all the fish will be on the next one. So you can really just spend some time doing this and not cover that much water. Gonna fish my way back in this creek though. We'll keep going here till I went for I don't know hour and a half, two hours, and I'm gonna I'm gonna fish probably. Boy, somebody's screaming over there. We may be witnessing a crime, y'all. <laughs> this video footage may be confiscated by the popo before y'all get to see it. fish a few hours this morning I guess fish till it gets hot that's the that's usually the thing this time of year that gets me off the water is the quickest is the heat I don't like fishing in the heat my camera don't like me fishing in the heat either because it don't ever want to work when it's hot overheats all the dang time there's a long tree it comes out. I can see where it was uprooted over there and there's a tip of it right over here. I'm gonna throw over to it. I don't want to necessarily get down in it, but let's see if there's anything on top of it. Dang damn it, I got in it. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> I got in it. There right, it comes. <laughs> oh, I see some thick looking brush right there. I definitely don't want to be in that. Let's move along here. Maybe it's kids playing over there. Maybe that's what I was hearing, screaming. I guess they are out of school this time of year. It is nice with schools being out this time of year because when you when you own road about six, seven o'clock in the morning, traffic ain't nearly as bad. You don't get stuck behind no school buses. It's nice. Seems like I usually get stuck behind the school buses when I'm running late for something. Without fail, that's when it's gonna happen. And every kid that's getting on or off the school bus, they gotta strut, you know? They gotta take the sweet ass time getting on and off. I guess I wasn't too, too big a rush to get on the school bus either, but Boy, when it was time to get off of it, I was ready to get the heck home. <laughs> oh, Skipjack just come up and nailed it right there. I seen him. I seen him eat it under the water. I seen him come get it right there. Oh, he gone. He's gone. Got my line all around my rod, too. A slightly bigger one. See what he done to our gulp here. Well, my hook point right there is yeah, it's still pretty sharp. It's bent. That might be part of our malfunction right there, y'all. I tell you what, y'all ain't gonna like this. Just fast forward. Again, this is raw and uncut right here, y'all. But I'm gonna I'm gonna switch that jig head out. Cause it's 
I don't know if you can see on camera or not, but the tip of it is bent up right there, and that's probably what's costing us some fish. I'm gonna switch it out. Fast forward, y'all. <laughs> if you're watching this video and you don't want to see me retie here. The last few years I've been talking about getting me some reading glasses or something so I can see to thread this two pound line through the hook eyes. It ain't as easy for me to do as what it used to be so that must be my eyes going bad or something. I just use a little clinch knot I guess it's called, trialing knot, whatever. Everybody's got their own favorite knot. This one's worked so well for me for so long. It's what I use. Put our gulp back on. We'll be back in business. Maybe the next skipjack, we'll, we'll keep him buttoned up. There we go. We're back in the game, just like that. I bet you. I bet you we had done lost 68% of the audience before that segment. And I bet you 24% of those that were left fast forwarded. What do you want to bet? Ain't nobody going to sit there and watch me retie. <laughs> Boy, if you have, though, thanks. Appreciate you sticking with me. Y'all watch anything. I've been watching a new show on, well, it's not a new show, but it's new to me. I just started watching it on Netflix called Manifest. I'm about three episodes in, and it's been pretty good. It'll probably, it's the kind of show, it starts out good, and it'll probably get stupid as time goes on. But basically, the, the premise of the storyline is, at least so far anyway, is these people leave on a plane they hit some turbulence and when they land it's five years later and they're all having premonitions I guess you would say here's a fish this fish I had a premonition I was gonna catch a fish right then but they're able to like solve crimes and stuff and and it's kind of weird but they're all having them things so I'm only like three episodes in. Oh, that's a nice bluegill. That's one of them Netflix things. I think there's three or four seasons on there, so that'll be my summertime show. Look at this bluegill's eye. Look at him out there. Oh, one eye. I don't know what's, I don't know what's happened there. I'm going to let you go, fish. You've had a hard enough life. You don't need to be come with me on a catfishing trip tomorrow something might eat him if i took him out there he wouldn't see it coming i at least want to give my live baits a fighting chance you know that fish there wouldn't even try to swim away here's another one we might be on some right here y'all hide my drag smidge that's two fish on two cast here we got a streak going we're streaking will ferrell style this is another nice one right here man look at that Look at that right there. Nice. As I get that hook in my finger. Let's put him in the bucket too. I gotta turn that pump on here in a minute. Don't y'all let me forget that. Let's throw over there and see if we can go three for three. Those are two quality bluegill. Even though one eye there had some size to him. Can't see anything right there. Could be some brush or something. I think we're about to break our streak just like that. Them other fish said if we're going to take his their friends hostage, they just wasn't going to. They wasn't none of them else going to bite. I don't think that's very fair of them, but they don't care what I think. Broke our streak just like that. I'd like to go on about a 20 fish streak at some point down through here this morning. 
it's liable to happen anytime. I don't know if I mentioned it. I'm on a creek in Melton Hill Reservoir in East Tennessee. It's got some better quality bluegill, in my opinion, here versus Fort Loudon and Watts Bar Reservoirs, which are 15, 20 minutes away. Here's another fish. I'm going to have to move off this area here. The wind's blowing me up on it. That's another... Feels like a pretty good one right here. It is another good one. That's another nice bluegill right here. There's some big bluegill on something right here in front of us. Look at this thing, man. That is a nice bluegill right there. I'm going to throw this one on the board. Nice bluegill, man. That one there will just graze that eight inch line, which to me, public water, you get an eight inch bluegill, that's a solid fish. I'm gonna let you go, bluegill. You go down there and speak of my exploits. Let me back up. I wanna hit this before I just ruin this spot here by being so close to it because of the wind. I'm gonna pull off. We're gonna make some more casts right there. That's three quality bluegill. I have no idea what's holding them right there. It may just be a branch or something that's falling in. This tree, it comes way out up there. There could be something that's falling down into the water and it's holding them. But either way, regardless of what's down there to make them be in that spot, they're clearly there. I got another one on just like that. We got another streak going again here, y'all. Two for two. Two for two, I think that's four out of five. Another great bluegill too. Man, look at this. We on some good bluegill right here. Love catching me some big bluegill. Well, he's hooked good too, that one. That was right through the snout right there. He wasn't coming free, was he? There you go. Nice, you're gonna come with us, bluegill. Join your friends in the bucket there. All right, well, I'm going to say the word streak again because we got one going. That's two for two. We'll throw back over there and see if we can get a, get a third. Two for two, I think four out of five. But four, nice bluegill. If you don't appreciate a good bluegill fight on the ultralight rod, you're on the wrong channel because I love me some big bluegill. I love bluegill fishing, period, as we break our streak. But um, the big ones, especially. Let's see if I can get spun back around. The wind ain't blowing bad, but it's blowing just enough to get me turned all funny here. I'm focusing on casting and not on boat control like I need to be. Nothing on that one either. Yeah, I get excited over in Bluegill, man. Probably more than I should, but... <laughs> Something's got to get you excited in life, right? I think it's probably a couple of reasons why I like bluegill. They're plentiful. They're pretty simple to catch. You know, I'm out here, just one rod, a small jig, a gulp minnow, and can catch the heck out of them. And you know, on an ultralight rod like I got, they just they fight hard you know you get a good pull they're gonna pull some drag they're gonna give you a good time when i woke up in a mood like i did today where i'm just wanting to get a bunch of fish and i know thus far today I haven't really got a lot of fish at least not yet anyway but bluegill will satisfy that urge for me when i want to go out and catch a bunch of fish I like them. I'd like to catch me another off that spot right there. They just 
they've shut down, I guess. If there's four there, there's probably 40 more. What I got here, I picked up a limb or weed or something. Felt good when I first hit it and felt a tension, but <laughs> quickly realized it wasn't a fish I was setting the hook on. Bounced it off that tree. Let's see if I can bounce it off the tree into the fish's mouth. I did. <laughs> Be jealous of my skills, y'all. Off the tree, into the fish's mouth. This is a good one, too. Is this a bluegill? Or is this something else? I wonder if this ain't a bass. Tied my drag smidge. No, that's a bluegill. That's a bluegill, boy. That's another big one. Look at the look at the flaps on this thing. Let me get him unhooked here. This one's got some big old big old ear flaps on that one nice man guess what bluegill you don't want to know where you're going take one guess where you're going catfishing with me tomorrow he guessed right a smart bluegill i feel like his friend that i let go earlier probably give him a hint but that's another big bluegill over here they're around this tree They're not biting every time though, but by gosh, there's some around it. I see them kids over there. Now it is kids. There wasn't a, thankfully there wasn't a murder going on that my video is gonna be confiscated by the cops. It was just kids screaming earlier. Well, they up early. I think these kids today, most of them probably sleeping in at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Playing the video games all night long. I don't even know what video games are in style now. When I was a kid growing up, I had an Atari. That was the first video game system I had. Played Asteroids on there and, and Galaga. And then, uh, I had a Nintendo, had Super Mario, and I had the old wrestling game with Hulk Hogan on the cover. It was a really bad game, but I played it all the time. I liked being Andre the Giant on there. Uh, what was after? What was after Nintendo? I guess the next version of Nintendo. I ain't played a. Well, I can't say I ain't played a video game because I've been up there to the arcades and stuff up there in Pigeon Forge recently. That Flava Flav. What Flava Flav? Is it called Flava Flav? There's some restaurant up there. Flavor Town. That's what it is. I've lost my damn mind out here. I can't even think it's more Flavor Town. And it's got a big arcade up there in, in Pigeon Forge and a uh, way overpriced restaurant. Food was good, but way overpriced. But I played some video games up there. That's the first time I played it in a long time. I just ain't into all that video game stuff now. Play some Candy Crush on my phone while I'm waiting on Catfish to bite, but I, I couldn't. The, the video game controllers you know, Atari, you had a joystick and the buttons on the side. With Nintendo, you had your directional pad and A and B. These video game controllers now, there's so many damn buttons and combinations you got to do with you with your fingers to to do anything. I can't. Hell, I can't operate them. It's it's out of my skill set. Even the football games and stuff. The last time I'd played a Madden game, it was so damn complicated. You know, again, back when I was a kid, you had Tecmo Bowl football. And that was probably the best football game ever created for a video game system. All you had to do to win was pick the Raiders. And you could be Bo Jackson. 
who's probably one of the best football players of all time, if he hadn't uh, messed up his hip, who knows what kind of records he would have set. But Tecmo Bowl football, you just you just pick the Raiders. And every play, you give the ball to Bo Jackson, and you win. So much better than this, this crap today. You got to push 47 buttons to pass the ball. We'll move on from that spot, y'all. I've I've lost faith in it. We caught we caught a few nice bluegill off there. What five or five or six, I guess. But they've they've had enough of me, so we'll move along. See if we can find some more. Never got on that streak. I was hoping just uh, we had a couple streaks of two going there. That was it. What are we at on time on this thing? Anybody still watching? We're at the hour mark, looks like. We'll go another 30 minutes here. 45. See what else we can get into down through here. Not a lot of fish caught thus far, but, you know, we got several quality bluegill, a few other smaller bluegill, some skipjack. So, again, it's one of them things. I'm not catching them just one after another like I would ideally like. But by the time I'm done today, I will have grinded out a 30, 50 fish day probably. Maybe more than that if I get on them really good somewhere down through here. Not a lot of types of fishing you can do to pull those kind of numbers on a trip, you know. This is one of the things that you can do pretty much anywhere, any body of water really any time of year except when it you know if it's super cold you can get on a bite but you're gonna usually find them a little bit deeper water you know you're not gonna have them unless you get in a backwater creek on a warmer day some fish are active and up winter time and this kind of this kind of fishing really slows down when the water camps get down in the 40s you know but nine months out of the year ten months out of the year anybody of water you can go out and catch a bunch of fish doing this as airplane man apparently didn't get the memo that I need to be talking to camera during this time period at least he's moving on quickly Some airplanes I guess think I ought to work around their schedule problem with working on the airplane schedule is you never know if they're going to be on time or not. The last time I flew down there in Texas, my flight got canceled going down there. I waited three hours at the rental car place to get a car because they was out even though I had reserved it. I'm like, how can I reserve something and it not be here? It was supposed to be reserved. That's the whole point of a reservation is so that when you show up, you have a car ready to go. That's how things used to work. That's not how things currently work, apparently. I ain't got no plans to fly anywhere, though, coming up. I'm going to go to a few fishing trips this summer, but I'll be, be driving. Got to go to Kerr Lake over in North Carolina in August for a tournament. I'm going to go to Rising Sun, Indiana in September, I believe, for a tournament. And I'm hoping to go back to the Keys, Florida Keys, at some point this winter. Probably maybe November, December, somewhere in there do some shark fishing I love me some shark fishing it's one of them things it's like they're so plentiful down there they fight so hard I'm like I don't understand why everybody that lives down there just don't fish for sharks all the time but they hate them they absolutely hate them it's kind of like carp fishing up here really everybody hates carp you know nobody fishes for them 
but they are just an incredible fighting fish that are plentiful, easy to catch. Nobody fishes for them. More for me, though, you know. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to have a good time doing it. This doc up here says, smile, you're on camera. Joke's on them. They're on camera right now. We're filming them, filming us, filming them. I don't see their camera. They may just have a sign. Like, and people have beware of dog signs, but they don't have any dog. Could be one of them situations. I imagine people like this probably get a bunch of stuff stolen off their docks, though. I mean, there's so many damn thieves everywhere anymore. They got them news stories and stuff. People just walking into the Walmarts and the Home Depots and just, just, just blatantly just taking stuff, whole buggies full of stuff, walking out with it because they know the cops can't do nothing about it and employees can't stop them. Now I imagine you get out here on these docks and stuff. People just leave crap laying. I bet there's a lot of theft. Of course, all these people out here with all this money and these lakefront properties probably don't give a crap. Probably just a drop in the pan for them. At least around here anyway. Lakefront property around here is so expensive anymore. Just getting a 100 by 100 foot lot will bankrupt you. Ever since, ever since the pandemic, everybody's moved to Tennessee, it seems like. We got just housing developments going up everywhere. People list a house for sale. It's gone within a couple days for more than the asking price. I mean, it just got out of control here once everybody started moving south. We do got it pretty good here in Tennessee. We don't have any state income tax, which is nice. Cost of living's pretty cheap. Climate's good. So there's a lot of perks to living here. I can see why people want to, but I wish, I wish they wouldn't. <laughs> I'd like to keep it as least populated as, popul as possible. The town I live in is getting so big anymore. It takes forever to get across town because they keep having to put up new red lights and traffic every day and. They're having to talk about building a new school because all these people that's moved here, the schools were overcrowded to begin with, and now they got to make more classrooms for their snot-nosed kids. So things keep getting bigger and bigger. Progress. That's what they call it. That's what they tell me. It's progress. I can't, I can't cast for a diddly poo today, y'all. This is another one of them floating pod type docks. We're going we're gonna to move on around over here and get on the other side, see if we can get back to them brush. The biggest bluegill we got was on wood, I assume, from that tree, that oak tree. So we'll see if we can find some more of that i'm probably passing up a bunch of fish around this dock but that's okay there's plenty more to be had and we know we know that there's at least some big bluegill holding to i assume wood based on the location i don't know what else would have been there that they were on so my perry mason deductive reasoning skill says we need to be fishing more wood down through here You know something, if I had one of these places, the dock and, you know, nice, nice property and all that, what I wouldn't do is put up one of those no wake signs. Because that no wake sign don't look good. And none of these jerk offs in the boats, wakeboarders and stuff, ain't none of them going to abide by that anyway. And they for dang sure ain't no cops out on the water that's going to write nobody no tickets. So you just litter in your property by putting up them signs. I wouldn't do it. 
But, you know, again, if people want to put up a sign like that and hide it over in the bushes, by all means. Maybe it's art. You know, art is very subjective. Maybe that's a, maybe that's like a painting or something to them. Well, we need another bite, y'all. I need a and catch me another fish here. We've we went on a little dry spell. I'm gonna swing around over here. We got some more down through here is a lot of overhanging trees and stuff. So we're gonna hopefully stumble into some more fish here. I gotta get spun around. This wind is hitting me sideways. I don't wanna blow up on these trees and end up with a snake in my lap like Bill Dance. There we go. Now we positioned right. Another terrible cast. Let's see if we can catch something with it. I need to check my bluegill in a second here, y'all. Tell you, I probably need to put that pump on them. I just got my five gallon bucket. Let me do that right quick. Y'all bear with me a second here. I'll show you my bucket. Those of you that give a crap. Again, I'm in my old town kayak today. Bare bones, pedal. Behind the seat here, I got my five gallon bucket. I've put a kayak hatch on here. Just a, I think that's a six inch hatch. I cut out the five gallon bucket lid, put that on. Bluegill, they seem to still be doing okay on there. Well, some of them's coming up to the surface. We'll put our, put a pump on. It's one of them Amazon, aerator pumps i got the pump cords there the tubes going into the bucket with the air stone and i got a little i cut out a notch you probably can't see there on the bucket to clip that aerator on so you might hear that vibration or whatever on the camera there you just have to bear with me ain't nobody still watching at this point in the video anyhow it don't matter most of you is done tuned out so heck with it we're just gonna cater to them bluegill help them breathe you know very important for keeping a bluegill alive that it does need to breathe I went up to Ohio and fished a tournament on Hoover Reservoir up there and I had me some crappie in a bucket that bucket right there and that aerator and my battery died while I was going to the captain's meeting and all my crappie in that bucket died right before the night before the tournament I was so upset about that it's like dadgummit I worked so hard to keep them things alive carried them up there in the in the hotel room and then they all bit to dust before the tournament I used them as cut bait. You know, they were pretty fresh cut bait, but it would have been nice to have some alive. You just can't have, in a kayak, you just can't have a big bait tank. I mean, you could, I could put a, a, a 10 gallon, 12 gallon in the, in the kayak and have the weight capacity to be able to deal with it. But the problem you have is you can't, carry that that kind of weight bouncing around the highway in the kayak you know on going to and from the lake so you're going to have to take that live well out put it in your car truck vehicle whatever and you know water's like i think it's like eight pounds a gallon or something like that so if you got a 10 gallon tank well guess what that's 80 pounds plus whatever the tank itself weighs that's a lot of weight to be moving back and forth between your car and kayak. So that five gallon bucket right there is a lot more manageable. I can keep a few bluegill alive, you know, a couple, a couple crappie. I can keep enough baits to make it worthwhile for me to do it without creating a lot of weight or a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of stress on myself. Now, if I was catching, if I was somebody like 
take a saltwater fishing or something, you're going to go out and catch a few baits and then proceed on out to fish that, that day, well then you could just have a, a pump system bringing water in continuously. And I've built one with a five gallon bucket that I use for shad. I just don't hardly ever use it. But it'll bring water in from the outside of the kayak, circulate through the pump, and then there's a overflow that the water goes out. And that helps keep shad alive, because shad's a very, somehow I've got, well I have my line in that leaf right there. The shad's just a very finicky bait. You just can't keep them alive in a small container and keep them, and keep them in very good shape, you know. So, typically if I keep a shad in this container, like overnight, like if I go out and catch shad today and I was gonna be fishing tomorrow, five gallon bucket I'd keep me three at the most maybe a couple bluegill in there a name of shad might be alive but they ain't gonna they're gonna be red nosed and and stressed the next day you know when I get on the water so not the best system for keeping shad or you know less hardy baits alive but things like bluegill crappie yellow bass you know those are hardy baits they're they're a lot more tolerant of bad conditions and, and typically too when I get home like today with it being a hot day I'll, I've got some bottles of water I keep in my freezer like old water bottles 16 ounce 20 ounce bottles I'll put one of those in there and just kind of help cool the water down a little bit and that seems to help a lot too with keeping those baits lively this is chilling the water down I'm going to try to feed them to some catfish tomorrow. Ain't the best time of year to be catfishing around here. We're in the spawn. I'm going to go out tomorrow because I'm in the mood to try to catch me one. Been doing a lot of carp fishing lately. I'm going to try to get a cat tomorrow, I reckon. I can't believe we've on a dry spell here, y'all. I ain't caught a fish in a while now. If you've stuck with me this long without me catching a fish, give yourself a pat on the back. I'd do it myself, but obviously I can't do that through the TV or phone screen, and you probably got hair on your back too. And you're probably sweating, so I don't really want to touch you, but you know proverbial pat on the back I just gave you one symbolic self high five as Diamond Dallas Page used to say I'm gonna stumble into some fish somewhere down through here I hope I'm not seeing well I've went through that tree now Dead gummit Oh, goodness gracious. We're about to break off right here. Put her eye out. One. Didn't do either. Got lucky. We ain't even got to fix our gulp back on there. Everything everything went good with that. And my line's a little abraded. That may cost us a fish at some point. I ain't retying right now, though. I don't even remember what I was saying now. That gimmick. It was probably something of brilliance that you would have wanted to take notes on. And I lost my train of thought. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I ain't seeing the shad activity like fish busting. Here's something. Well, my drag slip. Oh, that's a smallmouth right there. That's a small jaw, and that ain't a bad one either. Oh, nice jump. Nice jump right there. See if we can get a third jump out of him. Oh, we did. <laughs> That's a nice smallie. I was just saying how I wasn't seeing Shad getting worked up on the shoreline like I was when I first come out here this morning. I thought it was probably bass that was working them. And by gosh, we finally got us a bass. This is a pretty good one right here. This is a test on two pound line. Especially after I just threw into that tree a minute ago and 
yanked it out and fell some abrasion on my line. <laughs> if I was just fishing for me, I'd have retied. But since we raw and uncut, and I've already had to retie once, I don't want to. I don't want to put you through it. I ain't got no net either, so we're gonna have to lift this thing. Man, he's staying down now. We got three jumps out of him. Now he's staying down on. He's gonna come back up here again. Maybe not. Come on over here, small jaw. That's a nice one right there. We'll throw him on our board if we can land him. What do you think about it, small jaw? I gotta be careful. I'm about to blow into this tree here. Let's see the rod right there. There we go. Nice, man. Nice small jaw on the ultralight. Man, what a battle he was. Got three nice jumps out of him. Look at the colors on him, man. That is awesome. You are a, your skinny is all get out, but you are a good looking smallmouth. See what that side that side looks good too. Let's throw him on board. Yeah, he's skinny, real skinny, but he's uh, sixteen and three quarter inch, sixteen and a half right there. Nice, nice smallmouth, man. Man, I'm proud of you, Smalley. You was a battle on that ultralight, man. There he goes. Well, swim off for me there. There you go. I don't think that fish is all that healthy. He's extra skinny. He may have been recently spawned or something. Now we're over here in the trees. Now that winds blew us up over here while we fooling with him. I got my line around another branch. At least we can get this and off here as we as we go by. Goodness gracious, I'm in the leaves here. I probably got spiders all over me now. I feel some spider webs. Let's fix that back. Man, that was fun right there, y'all. That was worth the wait. definitely worth the wait right there i don't know if it was worth the wait for y'all but oh my gosh i just oh. <laughs> we ain't getting this one out man that one's wrapped up good dead gummit oh from good to bad y'all <laughs> look at this mess if that's going to happen, it's going to happen when you either doing a live stream or when you raw and uncut. That's when it's going to happen every time without fail. I got excited. I still pumped up over at Smallmouth. I'm talking to y'all. Dead gummit. <laughs> Yeah, anybody that was left watching, anybody that fast forwarded and landed on that smallmouth, they done clicked off the video for sure now. Put this line back here in the kayak behind me. Well, this will give me an opportunity to tell you about this magnet. I'm proud of this magnet. I always try to mention it in these raw and uncut ultralight videos, but I got a little shop magnet here on my kayak, and what I do is I put my jig heads on there. I'll get me a handful of them and just keep them on there that way when i retie or when i have to retie i don't have to get them out of a tackle box or anything they're just handy and ready to go probably my favorite kayak accessory that i've put on this thing although i really haven't put accessories on this particular kayak because i tried to just keep it as simple and basic and lightweight as possible because I use this kayak a lot if I gotta use a if I gotta use a, a launch site that's somewhere where I gotta drag a kayak away or you know what I'm trying to say. Somewhere where I don't have like a boat ramp. My Hobie kayak is so heavy before you added all the accessories to it, but now that I got the trolling motor and battery and line scope and a battery for it and you know, my my 
big Yeti cooler there for the catfish bait and stuff. And that thing is so damn heavy. If I ain't got a boat ramp, I ain't, I ain't fishing it. But this kayak, I can put it just about anywhere and drag it if I need to be. And this kayak's about, I think with the pedal drive, it's a little over a hundred pounds with the pedal drive, but after dealing with the Hobie, it, it feels much lighter than it actually is. Just being used to dealing with something heavier, you know. All right, for the handful of you still watching, if there's anybody left, we're back in the game. We've got a new jig head on. We got a fresh new gulp on. We've got a positive attitude. We're ready to catch some more fish. Maybe another smallmouth. He was skinny though. I mean, he's he may have been off the nest recently or something, or may just have something wrong with him. He didn't swim off. He fought like the Dickens man. Made three nice jumps, but he was pretty wore out when he swam off there. Of course, this ultralight, you know, you play and fish out a little more than what you are on them heavy bass tackle. Them guys got 50 pound braid and catch a fish like that, they, they're they yanking it in the boat two seconds, you know. They're not even fighting the fish, not even playing it out. This wind, buddy, is blowing me. It's blowing right up on this bank. We're gonna have to turn kind of at an angle to keep ourselves positioned. keep making our way along even though that small mouth was anorexic he was still fine I'm still happy to catch him I got oh something would hit me right then something hit me I'm gonna throw back over there it was definitely a bite Oh, I thought I had another bite. The wind's blowing a little bow in my line, but whatever it was hit me enough to, for me to feel it. it. May have been small bluegill or something. What? It, oh, I had me one right then too. I think that is small bluegill over there. I'm surprised they ain't caught more bluegill down through here. We got on that one spot there that had them, them big bluegill, but really not getting a, really not getting a lot of taps or anything from them. It's a surprise. All right. Well, oh boy, that was another skipjack right there. Oh man, that was some more of them. It was just a small one. There's some schools of small skipjack still working this creek. How many skipjack we got in my cooler back there? Just one? We got one in the cooler for sure, and I think I botched one of them that I botched there. I don't know how many bluegills in that bucket. Probably a half dozen, I guess. I'll keep adding a few more to it as I make my way along this morning. What are we at on time on this thing? An hour and a half. We'll go a little while longer on this video. Again, I'm gonna keep fishing today. For a couple more hours till it gets hot. Kind of the way the sun's coming up, I'm kind of in the shade here in this creek right now where I'm at. So I don't don't feel bad, especially with that wind blowing. Could do without that wind though. The wind ain't your friend when you ultralight fishing ever. I didn't think we were supposed to have any wind today, but that's the weather report for you. 
it ain't blowing hard anyway it's just just enough to kind of be a nuisance I don't know where all them fish went though that was busting the shad this morning when I come up through here I launched way back in the back of this creek and when I come up through here you'd just see shad almost going up on the bank trying to get away from stuff and that's kind of what prompted me to just go ahead and fish this creek instead of going on out to the main channel plus I was seeing what I guess was the skipjack out there kind of in the middle of the creek coming up too and, and whatnot and it really hasn't panned out with a lot of fish just yet the ones I've caught have been fun though a small mouth and big bluegill it's a good time I tell people all the time invest in a ultralight setup and some jig heads get your jig heads on ebay that's the cheapest place get whatever plastic bait you want you know to something small i like the gulp but you can use anything trout magnets bobby garland charlie brewer whatever don't matter pick you out whatever whatever one you start catching fish with you're going to develop confidence with it and that'll probably be what you stick with i've tried other baits i catch more on the gulp is it because of the gulp or is it just because I've developed confidence with it and stick with it, you know, and I, who knows. But either way, you catch a bunch of fish with it. I've had a lot of people in the comments and stuff tell me that they've tried it and gave it a shot and had a lot of success with it. And I probably take more pride in that than I do you know when people tell me that they've caught a big catfish or something because not everybody can go out and catch a big catfish you know depending on where you live you just may not have any access to big catfish you know, a lot of places just don't just don't have them but with this style of fishing here this ultralight fishing I mean, you can go anywhere in the country and you're going to have something in your creeks or lakes or rivers or reservoirs or whatever you know whether it's bluegill or perch or crappie or bass whatever you know you're going to have something that can eat a small plastic and go out and, and have a good time and so i take more pride in it i think because it's just it's this is the kind of thing that can get more people into fishing it doesn't cost a lot of money this rod is kind of pricey it's a good quality rod i've had it for gosh i don't, I don't know how many years i've had this thing now i guess I'm trying to think when i filmed my first ultralight video for this channel probably 2016 i guess so this thing's seven years old at least older than that i guess i don't know but anyway it's an expensive rod it's like a hundred dollars it was at the time it's probably more than that now 110 120 but you don't have to have a rod like this but you know if you buy you a hundred dollar rod and a 40 50 dollar reel and get you some line and some lures you know for less than 200 dollars, you can have a setup that's going to catch you fish year round and catch you a bunch of fish and you know depending on your catfish setup hell you may spend that on a on on a rod and some hooks you know <laughs> without even you know getting a reel or anything else and typically when you're catfishing you know you're throwing out depending on state regulations you know some of them some states have rules that you can only fish so many rods but like here in tennessee there's no no restrictions at all we can if you want to throw 10 rods out, you can. Most people do. If they in a boat, they fishing six, eight, 10 rods. Usually in the kayak, you know, I'm fishing four. But with this here, I mean, you can just get you one rod, one reel, some line, and you're good to go. 
do this from the bank, kayak, boat, sit on a dock. Don't matter. I went on a dry spell here, y'all. Man, between other than that anorexic smallmouth, he's probably anorexic because there ain't no fish down through here. <laughs> he ain't got nothing to eat. That's why he's so damn skinny. I don't know where they went. I guess the water's probably... As we're making our way back, it's probably getting warmer back in here. Well, if it has anything to do with it or not, but I ain't. Other than the small mouth and a couple taps at that one spot, which we saw a skipjack come up, and swipe at it. It may have been all skipjack that had hit me. Well, we really ain't seen much. Ain't no more docks going down through here, other on this side anyway. I'm gonna fish a little bit farther down through here. We may turn and go back out the other direction. Maybe hit the other side of the creek channel. See what's going on over there. Just keep throwing, you'll eventually stumble into some more. Oh, well, just like that, by gosh. Come on over here, Bluegill. Been a long time coming, buddy. Where you been? You got any friends over there with you? I'd like to catch them too. I'm so happy to see you. I may just take you with me. How's that sound? He said, that's a terrible idea. Probably the worst idea he's ever heard. Let's throw back over there one more time before that wind blows me up on the shore. Oh, I see another blue. There's two more bluegill. We're, we're on some bluegill right here. There's one. There's one on the line too. Tighten my drag again. Well, just like that. Like I said, y'all, you do this long enough, you'll stumble into some more fish, and here we are. I'll let that go. We two for two though right there. I think that's the longest streak we've had going today's too. It's hard to believe. Yeah, get repositioned. This wind's blowing just enough on us to get us all cattywampus here. I'm gonna blame the wind. If we break our streak right here, I'm blaming the wind. Yep. Just like that. Back to zero. At least we own some some life here again. If nothing else, there's there's some form of life. Nothing. Bluegill over there learned quick, didn't they? They saw two of their friends get their jaw jacked and they said we ain't doing that and bluegill over there is smarter than the than our kids today <laughs> you know what i bet you when it, when as adults and we grew up and we all threw out the encyclopedia britannica at our parents house they probably ended up in the landfills which got washed down into the rivers and now all these bluegill down there have encyclopedia britannica and they're smarter than us those three paragraphs on any topic you wanted to learn something about in encyclopedia britannica now the bluegill have access to that bluegill may take over the world and ai is coming along Robots are going to be everywhere, be Terminator style. The Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's going to come back. All humanity is going to be gone, but these bluegill, they're going to learn in Encyclopedia Britannica how to outsmart the robots. We've done it to ourselves.
Well, just like that, we was on them and now we ain't. Let's go back down through here and see where I can get a better cast in between these trees here. What are we out on species right now? Three species, I guess, bluegill, skipjack, and smallmouth. I saw some largemouth there first thing follow the bait. We ain't caught no largemouth yet. We may get one yet. I'll probably, may not happen on camera, but I'll probably get some at some point this morning. Usually do. Oh. That's something right there. I don't know if that was a fish or if I was just on a limb or something had some resistance I tried setting the hook either way <laughs> hook sets are free go ahead and go ahead and take them that's my motto I guess hook sets really aren't free because if you set your hook in something and you lose your jig head you're going to be out however much a jig head cost again i get mine on ebay so cost per jig head very cheap you buy in bulk you can drive the price way down gulp keeps going up i was at rural king the other day a jar of gulp it was 8.99 there i think amazon's probably the cheapest place to buy gulp these days it's 5.99 6.99 a jar on there but i got so many jars of gulp I'm ready for the zombie apocalypse when the terminator takes over and we're all hiding from the robots I'll be able to fish with gulp till I get until the, until the robots find me who knew when I bought all them gulp I got them back during the pandemic when you couldn't when you couldn't find any tackle anywhere everything was sold out I bought them on eBay. I forget how many jars I bought, but I bought every one they had. And I paid more at the time per jar than what they would normally be in a retail store. But you couldn't find them in a retail store. But who knew at the time when I was paying a premium that I would end up getting a bargain based on today's prices. Five years from now, I'll still be on that supply and the gulp will probably be ten dollars a jar It'd be a real bargain i may can sell some of them at that point and turn a profit i can't believe all this there's a tree that comes out right here i can't believe there ain't something on it bluegill crappie something You know, I was up there in Ohio for that term on Hoover, Hoover Reservoir. And man, the crappie bite up there was just amazing. And it was like nothing I've ever experienced here in Tennessee. Like we just don't have, like there's crappie in, in this body of water here. We got some really good crappie. And you get on them occasionally. Well, there's a turtle right there coming up trying to steal a cameo on this video. Enjoy them extra Instagram followers, Turtle. But up there on Hoover, I mean, like, it was just tons and tons of crappie. I mean, you couldn't not catch them. And here, it's just not like that. If I get on a tree or a dock or something that's stacked with crappie, you know, I'll catch them, catch them off that, but you're just not catching them all the way down a shoreline like you was up there at, at Hoover. It's amazing the differences in, from one fishery to the next, how some fish can be dominant in one area and not so much in another. Even within certain bodies of water, you know, like one part of the reservoir or lake or whatever will be, have a, have a bunch of one species of fish and then you go to the other section of it and not so much. I'm beginning to think I'm making a mistake by 
going farther and farther back in this creek, y'all. I think I need to be going the other direction. The farther we've got back in here, the less bites we're getting. Where are we at on this video? We're at an hour and 45. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fish a little bit farther back down through here, at least work these rocks, maybe get down here to this other tree I see sticking out. And then I'll probably wrap up this video. And I think I'm gonna, instead of continuing to go back in this creek with me not, unless we just something changes them here, I think I'm gonna probably go out to the main channel where I was originally gonna go this morning and just see what's going on out there for the remaining time that I'm gonna fish. So I'm just not seeing a lot of activity through here like I was first thing. Them fish had to go somewhere. I mean, they was busting shad all up and down through here, but they, they gone now. Been a nice day anyway. We ain't seen a single boat yet. Probably won't. I don't know how many fish I've gotten on this video. Not enough, that's for sure. For the length of the video especially. Here's something. Here's one we can add to the list. Well, my drag keeps slipping. But we ain't got a lot of fish, but we've got some good quality bluegill. Big small now. Here's another bluegill that's going to go in the bucket with us. Say something to the camera, bluegill. Tell these people, anybody that's left watching or have fast forwarded to this point, tell them thanks for sticking around. That fish ain't thankful. He ain't, that fish ain't never been thankful for nothing in his life other than having an Encyclopedia Britannica to educate himself and protect himself from the robots that's going to take over the world. Maybe when them robots, before they take over, I'll get me one and do the editing on these videos or something. At least this video today, I ain't got to do no editing, but in general, you know. I don't know. Everybody's worried about them. All them AI people worried about the robots taking over and stuff. And I'm like, I got one of them. I had one of them robot vacuum cleaners. Something was hitting me right then. One of them Roombas, you know. They, you, you turn them on on your phone and it wanders around your house in very strange patterns and it vacuums up. And it worked good for about uh, two months, three months. And then it started having all these problems and stuff. And I'm like, we're really worried about robots taking over. This thing can't figure out. And my house ain't even that big. Like this thing can't even figure out its way around my house after three months already got the dementia now I didn't think robots could get dementia but it apparently did so I don't know if them robots gonna take us over or not but if they do the bluegills ready Encyclopedia Britannica I bet I bet Encyclopedia Britannica is probably plumb out of business by now I think Google put them under we got a fish right here What do you think, fish? You want to come with me too? Might as well. We might catch catfish with you tomorrow. Hold yourself up. Say something to the camera right there. You're you're good size right there to catch a catfish. Probably in that five inch range. Let me throw over there again. Maybe them bluegill have all all the bluegill in this creek. Maybe just maybe they've come back here to this tree just maybe this whole stretch we went through can't catch diddly poo maybe it's because they're all here this could be the dollywood of bluegill trees but if it is we didn't catch one on that cast It may be a weekday, 
and it may be calm out here on the water. We got to place ourselves, but I bet Dollywood ain't calm any day of the week this time of year. <laughs> I can't even remember. I can't even remember the last time I've been to Dollywood. I try to avoid them tourist places. We'll catch another bluegill. I'm gonna ask him if they've been to Dollywood. Probably get him a these bluegill. If they went to Dollywood, they'd probably get him some funnel cake, maybe some hard candy. I don't know if they'd ride a ride or not. After after having a hook in the jaw, they probably ain't gonna feel like going on no roller coaster. throw over here on this what's well, hopefully the tip of the tree and not down into the tree nothing man I'm telling you, it's weird you catch a bluegill and there's nothing with him it's like he's he's alone and you know damn good and well he ain't alone what can you do people just keep casting just keep moving along like I said, I'm going to grind out a bite today. I don't know how many we've caught on this video here. and Pushing two hours now, but it's it's not as many as I would have liked. But the quality of the bluegill have been good overall. I've got several for my bucket here for a catfishing trip tomorrow. I had some skipjack at least give us a little entertainment there first thing had the small mouth so it's been a you know there's, there's been some several fish overall caught just you get spoiled doing this i'm telling you you come out and you have a, a, a you know you fish three or four hours and you you have a stretch where you just catch 100 plus fish you get spoiled doing it so when you, you come out and have a morning like i've had at least thus far and you're having, you know, dead stretches several minutes at a time. I've got one on right there. It's, uh, you get spoiled, you know, you just, you get impatient. Bluegill, I think I'm going to put you in the bucket. I think you're going to be the, I think that was a carp right there. Y'all might have seen it on video if anybody's watching. Bluegill, I think you're going to be the last one in the bucket. You ever been to Dollywood, Bluegill? He don't know what that is. I don't know if there was anything in the Encyclopedia Britannica about Dollywood. If there is, though, that fish at least knows about Dollywood. So he's read it. I guarantee you the letter D Encyclopedia Britannica has washed out of the landfill and into this body of water. Somewhere out here, there's a copy of it, at least one. Encyclopedia, if they're still in business, and surely they're not. But after all the advertisement they've got for me on this video, they better cut me a check. I need to see if there's an Amazon affiliate link for Encyclopedia Britannica. I got one for the gulp minnows. Y'all can click on that link, put a little jingle in my pocket there if you order anything. But somebody out there in internet land may possibly want to relive their childhood. I'm going to go ahead and keep this one too. This is going to be the last one I keep right here. But some of you out there may want to relive your childhood and buy you a Encyclopedia Britannica. So I need an affiliate link for it. Surely they're out of business. Though. Google had to have put encyclopedias out of business thought I had another one hit me right there something splashing over to the right I saw part of that one fish that come up there it looked like a carp or maybe a buffalo or something carp one you know the carp's probably upset with me that i didn't go carp fishing today 
they wanted to be on video, you know. I need to come out here and do some carp fishing. There's probably some big ones in this body of water. This body of water here, Melton Hill, it's water's a little stained today, but usually it's real clear and it's kind of deep, so the bow fishermen will have a harder time out here because usually if the fish is more than three, four foot deep, the bow fishermen have a harder time with it because the uh, arrow speeds get slowed down. And Lord knows nobody's doing any carp fishing, like rod and reel fishing out here. So any carp that's potentially in here have got to be, at least have the opportunity to, to get huge. Same with the buffalo too, you know. Where are we at here, y'all? Almost two hours. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fish my way down to this, this, I don't know what kind of tree it is. It's dead there. We're gonna fish down to it and I'm gonna wrap up this video. And then I'm gonna head out to the main channel, I think. I think that's gonna be my plan. We'll see if we can get something else between here and that tree. But I think I'm gonna at least spend a couple hours out there in the main channel just messing around, see what's going on. Get me a little off camera fishing time. That is the nice thing about doing these raw and uncut videos. I can go turn the camera on here for an hour and a half, two hours and get a video and then still have plenty of time left to go fishing for me off camera. Kind of works out. I've done one raw and uncut video catfishing. It was when I was using the live scope to try to target individual catfish back in the in the creeks and stuff in the winter. But a normal catfishing trip where you got a lot of downtime in between fish, it's kind of kind of tough to do that style of video. You know, at least with this. I'm making casts, even if I'm not catching fish, I'm making casts, we're moving along, we're, you know, maybe seeing something in trees occasionally, birds or squirrels or whatever, you know. With catfish, if I'm anchored down on a spot out in the middle of the river somewhere, I'm just kind of sitting there just waiting on fish to turn on or work through and going to get kind of boring on a raw and uncut video. Sometimes it gets boring for me just sitting there. That's why I play Candy Crush. I'll do that till I run out of lives and look at the girls on the Instagram and stuff and look through my spam folder on the on my email, see if there's any bicycle offers there for Daphne the dog. <laughs> you know. But that kind of stuff just don't it don't play well on a raw and uncut. I don't know if people are gonna sit there and watch that, but this at least. Some of you's out there seem to like this. I get a lot of positive feedback on these videos. Some of the videos do well, some of them don't. Kind of a crapshoot. My best video, best performing video last year was one of these raw and uncut videos. So, you know, you just never know. It's a, everybody's got their own thing. Everybody likes their certain styles. And, these videos here, they're easy for me to do. No editing, you know, just upload it and done. So I'm all about it. Yeah, I'm going to fish here till this tree and then we're going to wrap it up. Hey, surely, surely to goodness, there's something over here on this tree. Surely. The fish says, don't call me Shirley. My name's Bill. <laughs> fish probably ain't going to bite because they don't find my jokes funny. I don't know how deep it is over there. That ought to be something. I'd say as far as we move back in this creek, the water temperature has probably went up a few degrees. Oh, well I had him something right there and we missed him. Let's try that again. I'll go out there to the main channel though and 
mess around, see what I can get. Maybe should have went out there like I planned this morning. It was just hard to pass up with all that activity going on here, which is gone now, you know. But I just saw so much first thing. It was hard to hard to pass it up and not at least make a few casts, you know. Here we are a couple hours later and caught a few fish, but just not as many as what I thought we would. All right, I'm making one more cast over here. Last chance to be on video, fish. If you want to be on video, better get it now. Get it, fish. None of these fish over here want to be on video, y'all. Not a single one of them. They said, they said, I don't get enough views to want to be on my video. Oh, I had one. He followed it up. It was a small bluegill right there. He didn't want to be on video. He's embarrassed. Well, y'all, um, thanks. If you've watched this far in the video, thank you. It looks like we're about the two hour mark now. So I appreciate the heck out of you that's watching. I know some of you really like this. Some of you watch all the way through. My average watch time on these videos is amazing so i know a lot of fans do watch all the way through but uh been a nice morning out here some quality bluegill anorexic smallmouth just not many of them but i'm gonna i'm gonna make a run i'm gonna get out here on the main channel go see what i can find out there probably get out there and tear them up you know and second guess myself for filming in this creek but hey that's fishing we grinded out a few bites today we had some fun and that's what's most important but anyway y'all i'm gonna pack it up wrap up this video i'll see you next time thanks for watching